This is a style of extreme metal which typically has traits of highly distorted and tremolo picked guitar riffs with emphasis placed on treble, scooped mids and almost non-audible bass. Mostly shrieked vocals, double kick drums and blast beats reign supreme. Less focus placed on conventional song structures, but has more emphasis placed on repeating passages in order to attain atmosphere and an almost meditative and melancholic experience. It has fast to mid tempos. Lyrically, the focus in the early days was mostly Satanism and paganism. The origins of black metal can be traced as far back as the 1970s era heavy metal bands, particularly Black Sabbath, due to the fact that they too had satanic and anti-Christian themes and imagery. Later bands such as Motorhead contributed to the aggression and loudness, but it wasn't until the 1980s with speed metal band Venom, who unlike others at the time opted for a more unpolished production, anti-Christian and satanic lyrics. The sophomore release by Venom is considered to have coined the genre's name. The first wave spawned with a wide variety of early extreme metal sounds. It is also noted that the first wave does not resemble the second wave or modern black metal. Instead, it did take inspiration from the thrash metal scenes at the time, namely the German Teutonic thrash scene with pioneers, Sodom, Creator and Destruction. <laughs> Also the Brazilian scene with Sarcofago and Volcano. Hellhammer from Switzerland had that extra rawness and low budget lo-fi recordings for that primitive sound. <laughs> I'm ready for it, I'm ready for it, Cawthorn from the band Bathory made shrieked vocals popular. Hellham and Bathory claim to have also been influenced by hardcore punk notably the D-beat by Discharge. First wave black metal's popularity slowly faded away by the end of the 1980s due to the rise of thrash metal and also death metal becoming more popular. The 1990s came and the second wave emerged. Like many other second waves of other genres are important as they typically refine the genre that was created by the first wave. So too is the second wave of black metal very important. And this is where it truly took shape and came to be what we know today. It was a crucial shift and not just in the sound of the genre, but the basic beliefs and projection as well. The second wave was typically pioneered by bands such as Mayhem, Dark Throne, Burtsum, Emperor and Immortal to name a few. They were so essential to the genre as they took the elements of earlier bands and made it even more extreme not just in music but in persona as well. These extreme characteristics also led to some extreme incidents which will be mentioned as we continue. These bands focused on creating more repetitive song structures with tremolo guitar riffs accompanied by blast beats and double kick drumming. These bands also rejected the common song structure of the verse chorus pattern instead. They replaced 
these with extended sections building on atmosphere and intensity the most important band in black metal's history has to be mayhem <laughs> The 1987 release of the EP Death Crush can be seen as one of the first releases in the pre-foundation of the second wave, featuring their vocalist at the time, Maniac and guest vocals by Messiah. Mayhem was founded by Necrobutcher and Euronymous and Mannheim. They had some lineup changes in this time with a notable addition by the vocalist Dead which was considered as an essential member in the band's history along with Euronymous. Dead appears on the following releases, Live in Leipzig, 93, Dawn of the Black Hearts, 95, and Out from the Dark, 96. <laughs> The departure of original bassist Necrobuche, who has then been replaced by Varg Wickenes of Burzum. As if all this controversy was not enough, 1992 saw members of the scene, typically Varg, among others who have burned down several churches as an act of rebellion against the Christian law which has plagued and desecrated their pagan history. Varg also killed Euronymous, stabbing him 23 times, which was claimed to be an act of self-defense by Varg. He has been sentenced to prison for 21 years due to these acts. There has been many theories surrounding this one, being that apparently Euronymous owed Burtzum a huge amount of royalty fees for records distributed via the label Euronymous owned called Death Like Silence. Now let's talk about Death Like Silence and Euronymous. If it was not for Euronymous, Dark Throne would still be playing death metal, as well as Varg, who was known as Christian Wickeners at the time, would have still been part of Old Funeral, who also played death metal. So there would have been no person. There would also have been no Emperor and Immortal, one man shaped the foundations of the second wave and ignited many souls to join in what was a groundbreaking scene emerging from the ground. This man was the legend known as Euronymous. The label Death Like Silence Productions has been a huge part of the second wave, being the distribution and promotion of early records by bands such as Mayhem, Bursum, Enslaved, Abruptum, and many others. Emperor were another band who had ties to the burning of churches. In 1992, Samot from Emperor, along with other black metal musicians, set out to burn down old churches in Norway. In 1994, Samot was sentenced to 16 months in prison due to this act. In 1993, Emperor started recording their debut album. Emperor ceased to wear corpse paint as they claimed it has lost its original symbolism and significance and started to become more of a trend. While Emperor in sound had a slightly more atmospheric and symphonic approach to the genre. They kept the original unclean production in the early days. The album In the Nightside Eclipse, released in 1994, is one of the genre's classics. <laughs> along with the debut full length by Mayhem. Dark Throne, who started out as a death metal piece with some traces of black metal on their debut, 
full-length title Soul Side Journey, then in 1991, with the influence of Euronymous, Dark Throne quickly adopted the artistic style that represents black metal. They started wearing corpse paint. In 1992, they released their second album called A Blaze in the Northern Sky. This album consists of Dark Throne's first pieces of pure black metal. The follow-up in 1993, Under a Funeral Moon, was the complete shift to black metal. Their magnum opus, Transylvanian Hunger, was released the following year. 94. Immortal. A band was born from the ashes of Amputation and Old Funeral, two short-lived death metal bands which were created by Abat along with other members. The original lineup consisted of members from both of these bands. Both these projects disbanded in 1990 and 92 respectively. They formed Immortal in 1991. Music from their early demos were death metal, with lyrics inspired by Morbid Angel and Possessed. The band quickly got influenced by bands of the first wave, notably Bathory and Celtic Frost, and also the mighty Euronymous. The release of their self-titled EP in 1991 saw the transition to black metal followed by the debut full-length titled Diabolical Full Moon Mysticism in 1992. They played traditional black metal, which included albums Pure Holocaust, Battles in the North and Blizzard Beats. It was with the release in 1999 at the heart of winter, which marks the beginning period of Immortal experimenting with a fusion of black metal and German thrash metal, which has become the sound of Immortal from year on. The bands mentioned are but only a handful that led to black metal reaching out to even more listeners and so the scene has grown ever since. Also not disregarding other bands from the scene such as Gorgoroth Ulver <laughs> Despite Ulver evolving into something other than black metal before 1998 they had traces of black metal Notably, Natan's Madrigal in 1997, razor sharp guitars, and overall, it was just a trip filled with pure raw emotion. The use of synthesizers in black metal also became popular, I would say, from what I know was due to the release of Burtsum's 1996 album titled Hillis of M. This album was recorded in less than 24 hours. Varg requested the cheapest microphone possible that could be found by the sound engineer. All the other equipment he used were also the cheapest he could find. Basically, this was Varg making a statement against the ever-perfecting growing practice in studios. It resulted as probably Burtham's most iconic album, the horribly recorded guitars, which was recorded using his brother's stereo and a fuzz guitar pedal. The vocals were a scream of an insane man. Overall, 
this album is what I'd say influenced the likes of atmospheric black metal as well as ambient black metal. <laughs> Many bands spawned from different regions in the world due to the success of the Norwegian black metal scene. By the late 1990s, bands started shifting toward a more cleaner and less repetitive sound. Norwegian band enslaved who have experimented with song structures which were unusual for the genre. They added more progressive elements the band also rejected the term black metal and instead just called themselves extreme metal. As influential as the Norwegian scene was, and it probably was the most influential, there were also other scenes in different regions of Europe that contributed to the essence of what we know as black metal. The Swedish black metal scene initially didn't get as much praise as the Norwegian scene, well at least in the early days. It definitely deserves praise, although it borrowed from Norway, it became a force to be reckoned with and inspired many others in the genre. Let's go back to 1987. A little band from Sweden called Morbid, which played death metal with inspiration taken from the first wave of black metal, more specifically Bathory inspired. Morbid featured the legendary Dead on vocals. The release of their third demo, December Moon, got a fair amount of tension and Mayhem started noticing the potential Dead had as a vocalist. That same year Dead relocated to Norway, never to return, although it was his intention to continue with Morbid. He never did, and the band split up the following year after a short-lived period. In 1989, Dissection was formed by guitarist, vocalist and main songwriter John Nodviet and bassist Peter Pomdahl, as well as drummer Ol. In December of 1990, the band recorded and released a demo called The Grief Prophecy. In 1991, they had a complete lineup with a second guitarist joining. With this, they could further develop what would become a signature sound for them, the dual harmony guitar. This has become an important part of the band's sound. A few demos and EP later, they released their debut full length, The Sombre Lane. At this time, all the members moved to Gothenburg, Sweden. Also, this was the time when Euronymous was murdered. Dissection decided to dedicate The Sombre Lane to Euronymous. In November 1994, they signed a deal with Nuclear Blast and worked on their follow-up, which was released in 1995. The Misanthropic Luciferian Order, or MLO, which would be later renamed to Temple of the Black Light, was a huge inspiration for John, especially the grimoire titled Liber Azarate. Azarate is the hidden name of the 11 anti-cosmic gods or 11 dragons. The idea is based on Chaos Gnostic Satanism or current 218, which would serve as the lyrical basis on Dissection's final full-length titled Rain Chaos. The sleeping dragon
the album featured the magical formula from Liba Azarate. Marduk formed in 1990. The intention was to be the most blasphemous band in the world. In 1991, they released their first demo and first full length the following year. They can be defined as black metal, but took a significant influence from death metal as well. They released their second full length, Those of Unlight, in 1993. This time they manifested a more melodic black metal sound, leaving behind the traces of death metal that were previously present. expanded on this style with the release of Opus Nocturna in 1994. Modoc released 14 albums to date, but they didn't get the attention they deserved in the early 90s. Same can be said with Dissection and many other Swedish bands that formed around the same time. Although Kolthorn of Bathory, who was from Sweden, had so much to do with the first wave of black metal, by the 90s Bathory were no longer black metal but invented another genre, Viking metal and pagan metal. So now we ask the question, why did the Swedish black metal scene in the early days not gain the popularity the same way the Norwegian black metal scene has. The short answer is Swedish death metal. The Swedish death metal scene of the 90s somewhat overshadowed the black metal scene, but also the Gothenburg sound helped shape Swedish black metal in terms of sound, which separated them from the Norwegian scene. Typically a more melodic approach than the completely frost-like sound of Norway. In time the scene got noticed and flourished with a multitude of bands. To this day it is probably one of the biggest black metal scenes. Modern bands such as Vartain. <laughs> Craft und Scott. with many more. The Greek black metal scene was initially one of the most overlooked scenes from the early days. Hellenic black metal, as it's called, did however become a different beast, which was unlike the Norwegian or Swedish black metal scene. The sound leaned more toward traditional heavy metal riffing. It also included some elements of Greek folk music. They used a slightly more mid-tempo pacing. Lyrically it tended to favor epic stories which are rooted in the country's history as well as mythology. This also resulted in a much warmer sound of black metal compared to the cold, harsh sounds of the Norwegians, for example. Rotting Christ, who initially started out as a grindcore act, formed in 1987. They had several demos and splits in their rehearsal era. During this time, they quickly shifted their sound, taking influence from proto-black metal bands like Celtic Frost and Venom. And with this, they transcended into one of the pioneers of the Hellenic black metal scene. They got signed to Century Media and remained there for 10 years before ending up at Season of Mist. Their debut called Thy Mighty Contract 
was released in 1993 and followed up by Non Serviam in 1994. <laughs> Christ have released 13 albums to date and are still going strong. The music can be seen as slightly theatrical actually and although they dwelled in gothic metal as well mid-era, their roots belong in Hellenic black metal and they're definitely one of the pioneers within this scene. Another pioneer band from Athens, Greece were Varathron, formed in 1988. Most of the original members were involved in other bands, with a note to bassist Jim Mutilator, who was a founding member in Rotting Christ. Barothron released their first demo in 1989 titled Procreation of the Unaltered Evil. Despite its low quality, it got enough praise to set them well on their way to becoming the beast they are today. Another demo and split was released before their debut album spawned in 1993, titled His Majesty at the Swamp. This album was met with critical acclaim, and with this they marked themselves as one of the most important acts of early 90s black metal. <laughs> on to release another five studio albums and are still active to date with their last full length being in 2018. Necromancia, the third pillar in the Hellenic black metal scene, was formed in 1989 by George, also known as the Magus, on bass and vocals and Baron Blood on bass as well. Necromancia were unlike Rotting Christ and Varathron when it came to sound or unlike any other band within black metal at the time. What made Necromancia unique was the use of an 8 string bass. They only really used guitars for solos. But rhythms were all played on the 8 string bass with the intention of creating unique and powerful diabolical music. Their early releases earned them a cult following in the underground. They were not afraid to experiment with the use of, let's say, non-metal instruments like percussion and especially the saxophone. Their debut album, Crossing the Fiery Path, was released by the French label Osmos Productions in 1993 followed up by the magnum opus scarlet evil witching dreams in 1995 <laughs> They released two more albums, Malice in 2000 and The Sound of Lucifer Storming Heaven in 2007. In 2019, bassist Baron Blood sadly passed on due to a heart attack. In 2021, they released their final album called To The Depths We Descend. This time joined by George Emmanuel, former live Rotting Christ guitarist. The band split up after this release, but I have built a lifetime legacy. Note that there are many other scenes which contributed to this foundation of black metal. Satan. <laughs>